stunning fakery in the alleged chemical weapons attack, according to a former UK ambassador. Coming up. The British Broadcasting Corporation is accused of staging chemical weapons attack. The CIA admits planting CNN reporters. And international lawyers call for journalists inciting violence to be expelled. August 2013, and NATO leaders can't get the public on side for the imminent bombing of Syria. Suddenly, the BBC says it was filming a small rural hospital, and a game-changing atrocity happens right there, the moment they were filming. Month, we were filming the doctors working at this hospital when victims of an incendiary bomb attack on a school playground started pouring in. Absolute chaos and carnage here. It must be some sort of napalm. But the highly skeptical public stayed hostile to military intervention. Exactly one month later, the leaders are trying to pin a chemical weapons attack on Syria without success. The BBC airs exactly the same footage, but digitally alters the word napalm for, quote, chemical weapons, hoping no one will notice. Absolute chaos and carnage here. It must be some sort of chemical weapon. Not only did folks notice, but it unleashed a massive public investigation, which made some extremely disturbing findings. This is the total fabrication. From beginning to end of an atrocity with BBC reporter Ian Pannell standing amidst a tableau of very bad actors. This is completely beyond the pale. This audio analysis by media investigator Robin Upson shows both versions are identical and from the same speech. The BBC then digitally altered the words from napalm to chemical weapon, the exact justification NATO was finding difficult to prove. That game-changing allegation was made by two doctors that had travelled with the BBC, who claimed the number of sudden casualties is, quote, overwhelming. What kind of doctor, notes media investigator Robert Stewart, gives interviews when she is surrounded by supposedly seriously burned and dying teenagers? Get anyone who isn't a patient out of here. When a nurse does finally start to help, her order to get anyone who isn't a patient out of here doesn't apply to the cameramen. Even worse, notes Stuart, is the bizarre acting which starts when the man in the center gives the sign. What do you need to see? We are just see human beings. We want to live, you know? Isn't it our right to live? Dr. Roller, on whose sole claim the BBC sends napalm chemical weapons allegations around the world, is actually the daughter of Syrian rebel Musa al -Qadi. The parallel to the Gulf War and nurse Naira is stunning. Congressman said the nurse's tearful testimony that Iraqis were killing children swung their vote in favor of war. Took the incubators and left the children to die on the cold floor. Nurse Naira became the mainstream's darling, but once the vote had safely passed, she admitted inventing the whole thing and was actually the daughter of the Kuwaiti ambassador to Washington, lying to get the public to back war. UK Member of Parliament George Galloway joins us. Thank you very much for coming on. Why do we get almost identical claims before each war, which then prove lies? Well, the Bush and Blair Corporation, as it became in the run-up to the Iraq war, has almost entirely lost its reputation for journalistic integrity. A full inquiry must be launched into why the BBC used a piece of material which was not just wrong, but was falsified, and falsified with the purpose of propelling our country into war. That's not what the British public pays its BBC license fee for, so that it can be tricked into a war. In a statement, the British Broadcasting Corporation says it stands by its report. The Syrian opposition denies the allegations. Investigators such as Robert Stewart note their many questions sent officially to the corporation remain unanswered. There are also numerous such precedents, both in this war and previous invasions.
Brilliant is how a top Western official called tricking the public through routine faking of atrocities and commonly aired on mainstream bulletins. Nightly news shows just a few cases of what happened next after mainstream cameras ended their reports. It shows people putting on, you know, fake wounds. It shows there's some guys there. Look, there's their head wounds. Peace, everybody. You know, we're doing the right thing. We're, we're creating fake propaganda. I mean, it's not even real atrocities. So they're there lined up. There was another video that shows some guy kicking his leg and with a fake blood wound. Here's a guy who wakes up from his funeral. Watch this. They're, they're, they're uh, reading, oh, there, oh, wait, there, oh, he's awake. He's not even really dead. And so, I mean, this is just crazy what goes on. There was another video that was shot of, of a supposed massacre. And it cuts, uh, you don't see the whole thing. When you go to the Al Jazeera footage, it shows real quick clips of, a guy kicking his leg and he's got blood coming out, which turned out to be fake blood. The so-called activists behind the fakes are by far the most popular source, despite them never being verified and regularly disproved as fabrications to justify more NATO arms. The term activist may sound like a well-meaning Western campaigner or charity, but the foreign policy journal notes it's just newspeak for insurgents. The official source on Syria casualties, or what mainstream claims is official, is impressive-sounding organization the Syrian Observatory for Human Rights. Reuters exposed the fact three years ago it was not an organization at all, or even working in Syria. It's a single pro-insurgent supporter living in Coventry, England. Here pictured at the Foreign Office after instructions from Britain's Foreign Minister himself. In leaked footage, ordinary Syrians told the BBC they're tired of its lies and the insurgents they're cheerleading are a tiny minority led by foreign gangs. You don't like BBC? BBC, hello. Why? Say ye. Hello, BBC, say ye. Because you are, uh, you are talking very bad about Syria. Everybody when he when BBC Arabic, he can... Uh, here's a lie Jazeera about Syria. Yes. Al Jazeera but, and yes. Arabia. But, what is it? but maybe Syria is like any country. Some people support and no, some people no, don't support. No, no, everybody support. So Syria and is different. It, uh, there is very little people, little people. The, maybe 10,000 like that. But the most of people, uh, 22 million, 23 million persons support Bashar al-Assad. But even the And we have not the de demonstration, we have armed young. Pro-war media is forced to resort to colossal lies since intelligence chiefs revealed to America's top investigative reporter, Cy Hirsch, quote, Obama's cronies are making it up. All the evidence actually points to the jihadis staging the chemical attacks. The attack was not the result of the current regime, the high-level intelligence officer wrote in an email to a colleague. The guys are throwing their hands in the air and saying, how can we help this guy, Obama, when he and his cronies in the White House make up the intelligence as they go along, said a former senior intelligence official. The distortion, he said, reminded him of the Gulf of Tonkin incident. What? The president wants a white one. He, he wants a white one? A white? Let me talk. He's mobilizing the 6th Fleet. The thought a U.S. president would start a horrific foreign war by staging a pretty female front as a victim made people laugh. The young Albanian national fleeing in this video is attempting to escape terrorist reprisals in her village. Meet Julia, if that's her real name, the celebrated face mass media call the creator of a viral video asking the U.S. to help Ukraine. It was actually created by the State Department's National Endowment for Democracy to mask the fact Washington joined Ukraine's thugs and murdered their way to power. A leaked phone call with EU Foreign Minister Ashton revealed the opposition planned and executed the infamous sniper violence of Kiev, shooting both the police and their own supporters in the back. Study found a total of 250 mainstream sources lied that the snipers belonged to Yanukovych. Only seven of the entire mass media even mentioned the bombshell leak, and those that did framed the report to suggest it couldn't possibly be true. Former Wall Street Journal editor Paul Craig Roberts calls the coverage of Ukraine a new low in the history of the mainstream, which is now simply what he describes as a ministry of lies.
Investigative reporter John Helm has uncovered the mainstream staging demonstrations and attempts to provoke disorder. He joins us. Great to speak to you. One US scholar notes the coverage has now become Orwellian. What's going on? So the weaker your government, the more interested the leader might be in, in threatening Russia to look strong at home when it's obvious he's not strong at home and couldn't get re-elected. That's particularly true, let's say, of the French president or the Prime Minister Cameron at the moment. And arguably, President Obama is not only a lame duck, but um, uh, having great difficulty in putting together a winning coalition for the Democratic Party's next candidate for president. When you've got weak political leaders, you need to look stronger than you are in public opinion in the media. So there's this process of misleading and disinforming. The Senate committee inquiry revealed CIA running mainstream media in the vast operation known as Mockingbird. More than 400 journalists and media chiefs claiming to watchdog the government with the exact opposite joining to mask US government crime at home and abroad. The operation continues despite agency denials. Counterpunch discovered CIA imposing agents on firms like CNN. Former CIA exec Michael Schur notes British media are even closer to Intel targets. Big pieces of wood, metal, uh, to use as barricades. Schur adds the BBC now takes the lead in regime change operations that cause, quote, anarchy and violence. Let's speak to Francis Bohr, Professor of International Law at Illinois University. Great to talk to you. How can nations stop war media that now perform the CIA's covert operations? Certainly have their uh, uh, visas uh, revoked uh, and sent packing home because I really don't understand why some of these countries keep, um, uh, you know, European journalists, certainly uh, in the United States, why they let them into the countries. Uh, because uh, uh, they're, they're just using their coverage to promote war and uh, military intervention at home. In addition, uh, Bush Jr. administration lifted what was supposed to be the previous prohibition that uh, intelligence agents were not supposed to uh, infiltrate uh, the media. You know, you have to be very careful, certainly dealing with uh, uh, U.S. Uh, reporters, whether or not they're their intelligence agents. Banning active units of the military, also known as war stream media, shows how serious the situation now is. Their policies aren't popular with their own viewers. Mainstream audiences are in free fall. CNN and MSNBC have shed half their entire viewership in the last year alone. The question is, how many more coups will they stage or help before they lose the public's trust altogether? Seek truth from facts. This is The Truth Seeker.